Tetramer is basically an advanced material company. We make specialty polymers. Uh, we started with uh, four faculty members at Clemson that were developing advanced materials. So we took those materials, tried to find commercial outlets for them, and worked on uh, the fundamentals of understanding those materials and how they relate to a need outside for commercial need. Touchstone is an advanced polymers company. We're about 27 people, very much on the high technology side, so we're half PhDs. Pretty good split between chemist and uh, material scientist. And what we do is we work on molecular architecture. So we take a material, we change the structure of the atoms, and in doing that we can change the properties. And so what we really do, what we really sell is, is the knowledge and the know-how to take an existing material and transform its properties through our understanding of the molecules. At Tetra, we've grown from about zero people up to 27 people. Almost all are scientists and engineers, so these, and the average salary we have is over $60,000. So it's a high value type of thing that we think the state of South Carolina really needs and we've been doing it now for about eight years. The first time we worked with SC Launch was in 2007 and that was when we were working on a piezoelectric project and we had just received funding from the National Science Foundation to do a phase one grant which is a, a small startup grant. We got a uh, SC Launch phase one matching grant that uh, allowed us to really stretch out that research. The benefit of these grants is that when, when we start a project, a phase one grant only lasts six months. And that's enough time to get Tetramer you know, up and running and, and working on the project. Uh, we worked a lot with Clemson in doing joint development, and we've actually been able to have contracts written where Clemson University was a subcontractor and Tetramer was a contractor to do the development together. We have a lot of different applications working on. Most of them are alternative energy type applications. They are different types of green type applications, which we're very excited about. We're having a lot of fun. If you look at it, basically our, our materials are, are films. This is a polymeric film. We can take this polymeric film and put it into a fuel cell, which now is an automotive fuel cell, which is probably the highest efficiency type of uh, propulsion you can have. It can also be used in stationary power. So this little membrane right here allows the hydrogen ions to go through fast enough and uh, it's a performance oriented deal. If you then take this film and change the molecular architecture of it, you now have another application which is enriched oxygen. If you take enriched oxygen, take air, push it through the membrane, on one side you get more oxygen than on the other side. That oxygen now really enhances combustion. For example, in your home, you could save up to 35 or 40 percent of the natural gas that you're using because it gives you um, more efficient combustion. Same thing for glass furnaces, same thing for a number of different natural, any natural gas type things. So that's looking at that. Then if we change the molecular architecture again on this film, we can now have carbon dioxide methane separation. Now what's that good for? Well, inside the U.S., uh, we've heard about offshore drilling, and of course that's a source of uh, petroleum. But inside the U.S., there's stuff called shale oil, which is very thick, gooey oil. But there's more oil there than five times the amount in Saudi Arabia. So it's in Colorado. What you need to do is change the viscosity of that oil so to make it thin enough. We take this membrane and enrich the CO2, take carbon dioxide, push it through there, get 98% CO2, push that down on the ground, the oil then comes up. And that's being used right now, but you have to have a membrane that's very good at separation of carbon dioxide and methane, so we can do that. Now, if you take the same film and change the architecture again, you now have a piezo polymer, which basically, if you, I guess this is making some noise here, but if you now rattle it and move it, it will create electricity. And so you have a passive way of creating electricity by simple movement of the film. Or if you wanted to reverse it and put electricity into it, it would then change its shape. Now, where is piezo materials being used? They're used in microphones. They're used in a number of different areas, but also it's a way of harvesting energy. For example, tires. Rotating, you can get energy out of tires, anything that's vibrating. So, we make a lot of different materials that are almost all film-like materials. We also now take uh, soybean oil, and instead of making gasoline out of it the way a number of people are doing, which we really don't think is an efficient way of doing it, we're taking soybean oil and making things like 
cosmetics, we're making soy candles that we have, we're making uh, adhesives from that, we make asphalt additives and that sort of stuff. So we're not taking any government subsidies of that, we're making real life chemicals which replace petroleum chemicals as well. And then the last type of material we're doing again comes back to the film. We're looking at films putting nanocrystals in there which can detect radiation. Why is that important? Because things like dirty bombs or anything that in terms of cargo, you need a very sensitive way of looking at radiation. And so the radiation we can now detect cargo coming in, that sort of thing, and working with the, uh, the uh, government on that particular thing. So we have a lot of different neat products.